Now, this series we begin, actually, this is our third week, part three, on spiritual gains. And it's really building spiritual muscles in the everyday hustle of life. And I believe that there's certain spiritual disciplines that we as believers need to incorporate in our life. Um, just as a man or a woman who is exercising, working out, they're demonstrating certain disciplines, whether it's their diet, whether it's their workout sessions, the time they set aside to uh, do whatever, lifting weights, you know, and um, I think uh, we saw a lot of action on, on, on this uh, screen there. But it's really coming to a place of disciplining yourself for benefit, being trained to be more physically fit so that you can be better prepared to face life and face life's challenges. And so we're talking about it in that light. And one of the things that we need to think about, there's different spiritual disciplines, there's prayer, there's worship, there's time in the Word, even fasting, and and those type of things are all spiritual disciplines we see in the Bible. I want to uh, direct you to 1 Peter 2.2, and we'll share this. You can take this down in your notes if you're taking notes. 1 Peter 2.2 reads, Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. And so as we feed on the Word, we're going to feed on the Word this morning, this is going to help us grow spiritually. And really, it's, it's growing up into the potential which God created us for. Because many of us are living lives below your purpose and below your potential. And as, as we talk about what can we do to grow, what can we do to build, we'll find that we'll be living out the potential that God created us for, the purpose he made us for. And so we want to pray this morning as we, uh, before we get into the Word. So let's join our faith together. If uh, there's deer hunters out there, we want to pray for their safety uh, and so forth. But think, let's look to the Lord at this time. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to be able to receive from your word. And as we look to you, we thank you for truth that brings freedom and liberty in our lives. Father, we pray for the safety of the deer hunters in this season, that you'd give them wisdom and discretion, Father, in their adventures in the woods. And Father, we just thank you for your protection and your, your preservation uh, for them. And we just commit this service to you, Lord, that it would do a work in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, the previous weeks we've talked about this series, uh, we talked about devotion. And devotion is one of those things that's really defined as love, loyalty, or enthusiasm for a person, for an activity, or for a cause. And, and devotion is something we direct towards God. People become devoted to a lot of things. But we need to consider devotion as we look at spiritual gains and your devotional life and what that means, what's involved in that so that you can grow closer to God. And last week we talked about serving. And, and serving is is defined as to furnish or supply with something needed or desired. Now, we all have needs and desires, but to be able to supply those needs and desires, service is required. Uh, Serving in the church is, is, you know, we talk about serving, and some people think about just being a host, being a greeter, being back with refuge kids, doing something within the church during our services, and we need volunteers. There's Uh, sometimes up to 40 or so volunteers for any given service that it takes to, you know, do a service. And we're thankful for our volunteers. And involvement is so critical and crucial to the success of the local church. And we thank those that are serving faithfully and diligently. But serving also has to do with your talent, whatever that may be your time, and your treasure, okay? And so when we look at serving, maybe you're an electrician. and Maybe you're actually a licensed electrician. If you are, talk to me because we have some projects for you, okay? <laughs> or, or maybe you're a carpenter, and you, you're just skilled when it comes to, you know, woodwork or building things. Talk to me, okay? Talk to us because we have projects for you because we could go out and hire a contractor out there. But, you know, There's people within the church that want to serve with their gifting, with their skill, with their profession. If you're an attorney, talk to us. (laughs) 
I mean, the list goes on and on, okay? So, because what we have, we bring to the body to build it up. And, and so you have a skill set. And so consider using that for the kingdom of God, okay? All right. Now, today, the particular message, direction we're going in is worship slash giving, okay? Now, that's a big topic to cover. There's so much we could say on worship. There's so much we could say on giving. And we don't have the time to do it in just one service. So we're going to really combine the two. And we're going to talk about it in the context of Thanksgiving. Since we're about to celebrate Thanksgiving Day in our nation, I believe it's appropriate to combine these two aspects and look at them. Now, uh, Merriam-Webster defines worship as the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. It literally means to ascribe worth to something. Okay? Now, giving is defined as to grant or bestow by formal action to put into possession of another for his or her use. And so we see in, in giving and worship, there's so many definitions on how you can define it, but those are the two I just want to put out there in this message this morning. It's really important to understand that thanksgiving is an expression of worship that combines both worship and giving in the same action, okay? And there's a scripture we see in Exodus 34, 14 in God's Word translation. I like that translation. Uh, Check it out sometime. Um, It states things a little bit differently than the old King James, but it helps us, I believe, to better relate to the context of, of what the Word is saying. In Exodus 34, 14, it says, Never worship any other god, because the Lord is God who does not tolerate rivals. In other words, he's a jealous God. You know, he, he wants your worship, okay? Not because he has a big ego, but because he loves you and has so much that he wants to do in your life, okay? And, and it goes on to say, in God's words translation, in this verse, in fact, he is known for not tolerating rivals. So it's just like a husband and wife. If your wife starts paying attention to another guy, if you don't get upset about that, guys, there's something wrong with you, okay? And, and see, there's that godly, that's that positive type of jealousy where you're jealous for that person in a good way because you want to protect them, you want to help them, you want to be the spouse to them that they long for, that they need, and so forth. So uh, it's interesting, Jesus actually quoted this particular passage when he was facing temptation uh, in the wilderness after uh, he was baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. The scripture tells us that he ventured into the wilderness uh, to seek God in prayer, and there he was tempted by the devil. And uh, with one temptation, basically the devil said, if you bow down and worship me, then I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Okay, so it was a, a shortcut to actually achieve what he came to do because he was coming to redeem the kingdoms of this world for the purpose of, of, of his father's um, love, okay? And so in Matthew 4.10, Jesus then said to him, he's speaking to Satan, he says, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship, worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So we see there that that really is the context of worship. It's a devotion to God the Father, in Jesus Christ, his Son. And, and if you do a study of the Scripture, if you do a study of the Hebrew, you, you find out that there's seven primary Hebrew words for praise that actually demonstrate various forms of worship in the Bible. Uh, the Hebrew word that is defined as thanksgiving is the word todah, T-O-W-D-A-H. It's, it's pronounced todah. So, and it actually means the lifting of the hand uh, in an expressive uh, form of worship or acceptance of God, of his favor, of his mercies, by way of application, it's actually apparent in Psalms that it's used in scriptures that talk about giving thanks to God. And so todah is a form of worship that expresses thanks 
to God the Father. And not just thanks for what he's done, but thanks for what he has promised to do and what he will do in our future. Okay? And so the, there's a, a passage, actually, Psalms 50, verse 14, that uses this Hebrew word in, its, in the context of the scripture. It says, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. That word thanksgiving, there is todah, that form of worship to God. Now today, we want to explore the significance of giving thanks in our life. And so I think this is a message that all of us are going to connect to and relate to because it's something that we all should be doing. And sometimes we fail at it. Uh, But I'm going to give you four important truths about Thanksgiving. And if you're taking notes, you can write these down. Uh, Number one, Thanksgiving is an expression of worship. Thanksgiving is an expression of worship. We've already talked about that a little bit. Uh, But it's, it's the way we actually enter into God's presence so it's a starting place, okay? It's a starting place. In my opinion, I'm saying my opinion because you may have a different opinion on this. In my opinion, Thanksgiving is the highest form of worship. And it's the highest form of expressing faith. Because especially if you see a promise in the Bible that you're believing to be fulfilled in your life, to begin to thank God for that promise. Maybe you're dealing with physical sickness or infirmity. And you see the promise in the scripture of healing. And so you begin to thank God for his promise, even though you have not physically received your healing. That's faith in action. It's believing what God said in light of what you're physically experiencing in the moment. Okay, And so uh, Psalms 100 verse 4 confirms the statement that thanksgiving uh, it's a starting place, the way we enter God's presence. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Okay? So this is how we enter. And when we come into church on Sunday mornings, we enter this place with thanksgiving. We literally come into his presence. And maybe you encountered his presence here this morning. That's an entering in to his courts so that he can manifest his presence among us, so that you can experience him, so your hearts and lives can be transformed, because there's something so significant that takes place that is supernatural when we come into the presence of God. God changes us in his presence. He can change your stinking attitude. He can heal wounds, bitterness, resentments, the issues that we struggle with. God can encounter us and give us something that we can rise up in victory and overcome. So, yeah. Whenever, and let me just make this statement. I think it's important to understand. Whatever you've been uh, unthankful for, it's something usually that you've taken for granted. Okay? In fact, if you've not been thankful for a person, if you've not been thankful for possession, you're going to take it for granted. And, and sometimes it's important that we just express thanksgiving. You know, I mean, as spouses, if you, you're married, and if you don't express thanksgiving to your spouse on a daily basis, it won't be long and you'll take them for granted. You just, you know, they just what they do. You know, make these nice meals for me, do all this stuff for me, I do all this for them, I'm doing this. And it's so easy to begin to take each other for granted. But don't ever get there. And you can prevent getting there, taking others for granted, when you purpose and meaningfully give thanks. Purposefully and meaningfully give thanks. See, Thanksgiving, I'm going to give you one of, this is probably the classic Bible passage on Thanksgiving. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. And then there's a semicolon. So that means what comes next is important in relating to this first statement, giving thanks in all circumstances. It says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, now, let me just say, it's important to understand, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, 
that thanksgiving needs to become a lifestyle. It's the way we live our life. We live our lives from a thankful heart. And, and, and in fact, it's really the way of life for an overcoming believer. It's, it's not just a national holiday, okay, that we celebrate once a year. And study of, of God's word on this subject reveals that thanksgiving is a dominant activity in a believer's life, as well as being a command, a direct command from the Bible. We see it. Being thankful is a godly quality that every believer should possess and demonstrate in their lives. Now, I want to share with you, because obviously Thanksgiving is a national holiday, and it's really to reflect with gratitude what God has provided for us in this nation and uh, his faithfulness to America since its inception, uh, since the early settlers came to to found this land. Um, Thanksgiving is more than just a paid holiday or time off from work. And so I just want to take a moment and read George Washington's proclamation, because it gives us a reference point as, as American citizens when we think about the day that we're about to celebrate uh, as family comes together and, and, and you just have some time to really uh, get together and not just eat turkey, but, you know, hopefully you'll get along and all that stuff. But George Washington states, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. Whereas both the houses of Congress have, by their joint committee, requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and single favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend next to be devoted by the people of the states to the, to the service of that great and glorious being who is the benevolent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country. George Washington, 1779. How powerful are those words. And uh, so let's take that to heart this season. Now let me ask you this question. How thankful are you? If there was a thankful scale, how would you rank on that scale? If there was a meter that could measure your level of thanksgiving, where would you end up? My, my uh, encouragement to you is determined to make Thanksgiving more than just a national holiday that we celebrate once a year. Uh, make it your lifestyle. And as believers, we need to develop a thankful heart. And hopefully some things I share with you today will help you to begin to do that may, maybe in a more proactive way. Um, and the word develop, when you think about developing, develop means to create or produce, especially by deliberate effort over time, to make active or promote growth, to expand by a process of growth. So if we're going to develop it, we've got to put something into it, okay? We have to make an investment. Colossians 3.15, I love this passage, and, and the whole thing in context says a whole lot more, but we're going to, uh, in particular, focus on verse 15. It says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. So here we see a direct command from the scripture, but when we allow the peace of God to rule in our heart, that gives us a basis for thanksgiving. Because when God's peace is established, it settles the conflict, it settles issues, so that you then can begin to release and proactively be thankful, okay? And so uh, the ability to give thanks is already in you. You have that capacity. You just need to act on it. You have a choice when you face a crisis to respond with a negative attitude, to grumble, to complain, or to be thankful in the midst of it. I'm, I'm going to share a couple of things a little bit later. 
I might have to tell on my daughter, maybe I won't. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll go good on her. It's her first time back for a long time. So, um, But take a moment right now and think of at least three things that you're thankful for. You don't say it out loud. Just think about that. Uh, the scripture says, in everything, give thanks. Again, this verse, First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all situations, all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, this is a God directive regardless of the situation. We must train ourselves to be thankful and to give thanks. Since human nature is prone to grumble, to complain, to be negative, and always focus on the problem rather than the answer. See, God's will is identified in this verse. In every circumstance, give thanks. This is where the will of God begins for your life, by being thankful. Because when you're thankful, then you begin to see things from a different perspective. It's not God's desire for circumstances, situations, or people to prevent us from expressing gratitude. There's nothing that should stop us from being thankful. And notice it says for, it doesn't say for every circumstance give thanks. It says in every circumstance give thanks. Because I can't give thanks for tragedy that happens when something horrible happens and loss of a loved one or when, when, when things go totally wrong. But yet in everything we can give thanks, in that difficult situation, in that tragedy, we still have the capacity to be thankful because God is with us. He's going to get us through it, and he'll help us because we have a promise. And so we can be thankful in the midst of the crisis because God has an answer and a solution for us. Okay, He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Colossians 3.15 in the Message Bible, we read it before in the ESV version. It says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And notice it says, and cultivate thankfulness. See, thanksgiving brings about unity. It brings us together. True thanksgiving proceeds from the heart, not from outward circumstances. So your circumstances are not the determination of whether you give thanks or not. If something bad happens to you, that's not my determination. Oh, I, I guess I can't be thankful now because I, I just got a flat tire. So I can't be thankful now. And so, but that's, that flat tire does not determine my ability to give thanks because we have a command from Scripture. Psalms 86.12 says, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. See, it's all about the heart. Thanksgiving proceeds from the heart. And when you, you give God thanks from the heart, it's, it's a powerful release of, of coming to a place of, of seeing things even from a different perspective. And it's, obviously, it's easy to express gratitude and thanksgiving when everything is going well. But it becomes difficult to maintain a thankful heart when things become difficult. I believe that a thankful heart will sustain us in the midst of difficulty. Are you facing a difficult situation today? It's a thankful heart that will get you through that. And you might say, but what do I have to give thanks for? Well, there's, there's a whole lot. You can make a list because it could be worse than what it is. We thank God for what he's done in the past. We thank God for what he's doing in the present. And we can also thank him what he's going to do in the future. Thanksgiving relates to, Paul, to the past, to the present, and to the future. It's important to understand that. Now, if thanksgiving is an expression of worship, why should you be thankful? I believe the why is because it's a way we honor God and we honor people because thanksgiving is directed towards God and people. I'm thankful for all of you here today. I'm thankful that you decide to take the time to come and sit and listen to this, this guy talk up here. But I'm more thankful that you came to worship God, to encounter his presence, because you have a desire to grow in the knowledge of his will. So important truth number two. We're, we're going to get through this, okay? Uh, giving thanks protects you from a negative mindset. It protects you from a negative mindset. 
In fact, negative thoughts run rampant like a plague. Giving thanks guards against negative thoughts that lead to discouragement, to depression, and just that negative, you know, depressive kind of thing. And so that means our prayer time should be filled with thanksgiving. Because I believe it's the highest form of faith that can be expressed. Colossians 4.2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. If you need an attitude check, the attitude check should be, am I thankful right now? Am I thankful right now? Refuse to let the circumstances, the situations, or people steal your gratitude or even hinder your ability to give thanks in all circumstances. See, we should be thankful to avoid becoming bitter. In fact, God desires for you to get better, not bitter, because things are going wrong in your life. If we're not thankful, we can become bitter and even critical and even cynical. If we're not thankful, it becomes easy to ask the question, why me, Lord? Uh, developing, I believe, a thankful heart is a key to overcoming in life. And, and we want you to overcome in life. I want the people of refuge to be overcomers and to live lives of victory. And, and thankfulness is a key to that. Giving thanks, I believe, is a God directive regardless of your situation. And we must train ourselves to be thankful and give thanks since human nature is so prone to be negative, to complain, and to grumble all the time. So the most intense moments of thankfulness, realize, are not found in times of plenty, but when difficulties abound. When we think of the pilgrims, their first Thanksgiving, half of their numbers uh, were dead. That originally came to that land. And their gratitude was not for something, but it was in something. It was in the freedom to live in a country that they could worship God. And it's interesting, there's a, there's a Greek New Testament word for thanksgiving. It's, it's called charis, and it's the same word that's used for grace. And it's important that thanksgiving ministers the grace of God because uh, it, it's a powerful flow. Charis is, and I'm, I'm going to give you the definition of it, it's that which bestows or occasions pleasure, delight. It means favorable regard, divine, divine favor, goodwill, loving kindness, graciousness. So giving thanks can be seen as an extension of all these things. It's, it's an extension of God's grace. When you're thankful, people respond to that because you're ministering God's grace in the moment when you're expressing thanks. And I, I believe that um, I'm going to give you uh, the next one here. You know, we're living in an ungrateful generation. And I know many of us have been victimized by an ungrateful generation. And we can learn lessons in Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, one of the lessons in Thanksgiving is, is not to react right away because I'm, I'm one that is so prone to think the worst, to believe the worst when something happens. And uh, earlier in the school year, we got a, a call from Mackenzie, and, and, and she said, Dad, don't get mad or upset with me. And I'm thinking, okay, what happened? And she said, I, I believe my computer and my passport were stolen. They were in one place. I went there. They're not there. I looked all over. I can't find it. My immediate reaction, okay, I need to contact the uh, United States passport office and get a, that reissued, talk to the um, uh, embassy there in Australia, do all this, and then, you know, computers are not cheap, you know. But I stepped back, and I began to realize, okay, Lord, we're gonna, you got this one. And it all turned out well. Long story short, um, the computer was found, the passport was found, it was returned, and everything was intact. So thank God, thank God. And um, uh, I don't know about you, but this times, I mean, myself, we were taking a team to Africa, and we were flying out of Minneapolis. And so we, we landed, and uh, we, I went by a kiosk to, to ch uh, check in and, and do stuff there. And I mistakenly 
left my passport there, and I went on. And I went, went to the gate. I'm sitting at the gate. And you know, usually when I'm sitting at the gate, that's where I can really begin to relax. Oh, all we have to do is get on the plane. And so I decided, and that's the time we had printed tickets. So I, uh, I, was gonna, I thought, well, oh, maybe I'll just go in my backpack and make sure my passport and my ticket is here. I looked at my backpack. It was not there. And then I looked at my carry-on bag, and I, it was not there. I, and then I started to really think the worst. Oh, no. This plane is departing in 20 minutes, and I don't have my passport. I don't have my ticket. That's serious business. And then I'm thinking, okay. And the whole team that were with me, they prayed. And a great calm came over my heart. And I realized, okay, I need to retrace my steps. Where was I? And so I walked in Minneapolis. It's a long, there's a lot of, of road that you can, um, of miles you can put on in that airport. And I went back to the kiosk and believe it or not, and this is after about, 40 minutes, my passport, my ticket was sitting right next to that kiosk. I'm thinking, Lord, you blinded people from seeing this, at least the bad people from seeing it. (laughs) A good person would have turned it in, right? And uh, so, and and Michaela can tell you, I mean, Mackenzie can tell you other stories about uh, her travels in Australia and how God helped her with that. So good for conversation. All right, point number three, point two to number three. An ungrateful and unthankful heart blinds you from seeing and recognizing just how blessed you are. So giving, giving thanks opens your eyes to see how blessed you are and exposing a wrong focus because sometimes we're not focusing on the right things. See, I believe that the danger of a failure to give thanks results in substandard living. And you just become blinded to the blessings around you. When you're unthankful, when you're ungrateful, you become short-sighted. See, you need to judge your words. Are your words words of gratitude or nothing more than grumbling and complaining? You know, I, I now arrest myself or I have other people arrest me. Pastor Deb has put permission any time when I say something negative, when I get on off of a ne- on the me- negative trail or mindset, she's on top of that, and I'm thankful for that. She jerks the slack out of me because it's so easy. I think humanly, human nature is prone to believe the worst, to think the worst, to get off on that track. And, and so I, I believe that giving thanks is something we need to do, we need to practice. And I believe all of us need a revelation that God is a good God. We need a revelation that God is good. In Psalms 136, one says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. See, there's, in, in that particular psalm, 26 times the psalmist makes this declaration, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good. And it's a psalm of thanksgiving. And my challenge to you is read that this week. Uh, read that over the uh, Thanksgiving or something. Psalms 136, and, and it's really an opportunity to give thanks for the sky, give thanks for this, that, and the other thing. There's a whole list in there that the Scripture goes over. Now, Romans 1, 21 and 22, we see a passage here because I believe when we don't give thanks, there's a consequence. It says, for although they knew God, and this is speaking to people that had some type of encounter with him, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. I believe that's the outcome of someone who's ungrateful, unthankful, that refuses to give God thanks. And, and so keep that in mind, because you don't want to end up there. Finally, being thankful cultivates generosity. A thankful heart is a generous heart. So you can't be thankful without giving. Because it requires something of you to be thankful. See, thanksgiving is a compound word that can be spoken two ways. Thanksgiving or giving thanks. But giving is connected with thanksgiving or with thanks. A thankful heart will be demonstrated in the response of generosity towards God. Not only in your tithes and offerings, but in your generosity towards other people. 
in this Christmas season, this is a, as we enter into it, people are generous with loved ones, with family, and sharing uh, their blessings with others. But that's a result of, of, of a thankful heart. If you're stingy and you don't like to give presents or things like that, I can promise you, you are unthankful and ungrateful. If you're thankful, I believe you're a generous person. You have a generous heart. So giving thanks and being thankful is an expression from the heart that ministers life to those that we interact with. And so giving t- our time, our talent, and treasure is important. And I want to close with a passage, 2 Corinthians 9, 11 through 15. And this is talking in the context of giving, but also in the context of thanksgiving. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 says, You will be enriched in every way, to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. See, thanksgiving is produced. But so you see the connection between generosity and thanksgiving. Verse 12, for the ministry of this service is not only supporting the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. Verse 13, by their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I don't have time to really break that down, but I want to leave you with the thought, and you see the connection between giving and thanks uh, and, and generosity. And, and so we, we see that as we become thankful, it becomes less difficult to give and to share because the two are connected, the two are related. Again, just to go over these four points, again, the four points we shared with you, important truths about Thanksgiving. Number one, Thanksgiving is an expression of worship. Number two, giving thanks protects you from a negative mindset, and we need that. We need that desperately. And number three, an ungrateful and unthankful heart blinds you from seeing and recognizing just how blessed you are. You can't see how blessed you are when you're ungrateful. And being thankful, number four, cultivates generosity. Being thankful cultivates generosity. This morning, I want you to ask the Lord a question. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me through this message today? What changes do you want to make in my life? And I believe some of you need to repent from being unthankful and ungrateful. Maybe you're driving a car that's giving you difficulty. And you're saying nothing positive about that car. This is a piece of junk. I can't wait till I get rid of this thing. And, and you may just have an issue with your car. I'm going to challenge you. Regardless of the condition of that car, start thanking God for it. Because don't expect God to bless you with something else if you're not thankful for what you have. It may not be the best car on the lot, but you got a car. So begin to thank God. Thank God it started this morning. Thank God none of the tires were flat, you know. There's a thank you that it gets you from point A to point Z, okay? You know, sometimes Pastor Devin and I were talking about buying and selling homes and the whole process of that because there's thanksgiving in the process. You can get so excited. Wow, they accepted my offer. But then there's all these other elements that go into motion that cause tests and trials. Or, you know, so it's, it's knowing that in the process we are giving thanks no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're dealing with, and what we're going through, we're giving thanks. So I think there's got to be some repentance here today because I, I just kind of sense some of you have been a little bit ungrateful and unthankful lately. Maybe it's your job. I can't stand this job. You need to be thankful for that job. You're getting a paycheck at least. I hope you're getting a paycheck. Thank God for that provision. Thank God for your boss. 
I, when you start becoming thankful, it's going to be seen in your life. People say, what happened to you? They won't have to put up with all that complaining and bickering anymore. My dad used to say, if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. That's some good wisdom. Sometimes you need to keep your mouth quiet if you can't give thanks. Let's stand up together. Because we're going to pray in a moment. But before we do, I want to extend an invitation. Maybe you came into church this morning. And where you're at spiritually may be questionable. Maybe you came because you were invited. Maybe you came because you just sensed this desire to connect with God. Maybe you came because you just wanted to grow in God. Regardless of the condition you came here, I want to speak to those that may not be in a place where your heart is right with God. And maybe you have questions. Maybe you don't even know whether your heart is right with God. I want to encourage you today to make peace with Him. The Scripture is very clear. It says if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that if we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So to receive salvation, salvation is a gift from God. When we look at the human race, when we look at what happened in the garden when Adam and Eve fell and sin came upon the whole human race, there was a need for a redeemer there was a need for someone to save us from our sins. All of us can probably freely admit, yes, I'm a sinner. But how many of us are willing to admit, I need a Savior? I, for one, have come to a place where I've admitted the need of a Savior because I acknowledge that I was a sinner. And if you are in a place as a sinner who needs a Savior, and you haven't received Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity at this time. I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. And I'm speaking to those that you're in a place, maybe you've walked with God and in your place where you're not walking with Him now, or maybe you've never really opened your heart to receive Jesus. Maybe you've acknowledged that you're a sinner, but you've not acknowledged your need for a Savior. And if you're here, you say, Pastor, I'm willing to accept the Savior and receive him into my heart and life. And that Savior is Jesus. He came to seek and to save the lost. He came for you, for me, because he saw a need. So if you lift your hand and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. If that's you, just lift your hand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Several people this morning. Okay, you can put your hands down. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and I call this prayer a believer's prayer because it's simply believing in Jesus, putting your faith and your, your faith and trust in Him. So let's pray together. Repeat after me and make my words your words. Embrace them from your own heart. Heavenly Father, I open my heart to you. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. And I put my faith in you. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead to give me life. Jesus, make my life what you want it to be. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now remain standing. and We're going to worship in a little bit, but I want to pray for all of you, that God would cultivate within you a thankful heart. That today would be a day you would change. That you would not gravitate to the negative any longer. That you would no longer be a complainer, a grumbler, a fault finder. But that from this day forward, you will be thankful. And you will express words of thanks every day to God and to those you encounter. Father, I pray right now for this congregation, and I pray 
Lord, that we would embrace a lifestyle of thanksgiving. That we would truly be known as a thankful people. As men and women who express thanks and give thanks to you. And thank Father people for what they are and what they do for us. In Jesus' name, deliver us from an unthankful, ungrateful heart. Let us go there no more. We repent. In Jesus' name, forgive us for being unthankful, for being unthink and ungrateful. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father God. Amen. Well, we're going to worship God in a song, so we invite you to join in. And uh, the prayer team is going to be up here in a little bit. If you raise your hand for the first time, there'll be people up here uh, that will be willing to pray with you. If you have any need whatsoever and you desire prayer, our prayer team is uh, equipped to pray with you and for you. Uh, if you're facing crisis, if you're going through some difficulty, or even if you just want more of God, say, would you just pray that I would have more of God in my life? Uh, God will honor that prayer, and he'll meet you. Thank you so much for being attentive to the word. God bless you. You guys have a good day. And be thankful, okay? I want to hear words of thanksgiving when we, you know, end the service, okay? God bless you.